So whenever we go fishing, we all want to throw those big fun baits to throw. Your chatter baits, your top waters, your leer liplesses, your crank baits. Those things are the things that we go out there wanting to catch fish on. But it doesn't always work out that way as we all too often know. But there's a bait that you can throw behind all of those other baits that seems to catch pretty much everything out there. A Ned Rig. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to fish a Ned Rig, some of the benefits of it, and at the end of the video, I'll talk about some of my favorite Ned Rig baits that actually go under the radar to help you catch more fish when your favorite baits don't work out. So stick around, you guys are not going to want to miss this video. And so just like a Sanko, it's super, super simple to rig. The originators of the Ned Rig, which is Z-Man, Z-Man came out with the first original Ned Rig, and probably, in my opinion, the best Ned Rig out there on the market, also came out with some of the first original Ned Rig heads, which are just basically a small stand-up jig head. And so the way you rig it is you literally take one of the Z-Man Neds, insert it into the bait, get it about where it's going to be lined up to where that bait is straight, and bam. There you go, there's your Ned Rig, it's super simple. And here I have the medium sized Ned Rig. They also have micro Ned Rigs, regular Ned Rigs. This is the medium Ned Rig. And then they have giant TRDs, which is what they're originally called as TRD because they worked so well with the original small size that they had to come out with all of the different sizes, which is why I'm showing you this model today because I want you to be exposed to all of the different sizes to come across all of the different situations you might be putting yourself in. If you're fishing for bluegill, you can break out the micro net rig. If you're fishing for really small bass, break out the micro or the original. But if you're on a lake where you're getting into some bigger large mouth, some bigger small mouth, the medium TRD might be your style. And one thing that I also want to talk about is there's no wrong situation to throw it. Today, I'm skipping it around docks, and then I'm gonna go throw it in some holes in the grass and on some sandy spots and some shell beds. But you can literally throw it in any given situation. You can drag it on points, you can fish it deep. I catch smallmouth in 50, 60 feet of water with it. I also catch smallmouth in two feet of water with it. So one critical component to a Ned Rig that most people often overlook and what kind of equates to them losing fish is going to be the Ned Rig hook that they throw their their Ned Rig on. For your Ned Rig, I have three hooks that I like to throw these little babies on, and I'm going to break those down right now. The first of which being the go-to, this is the Ned Locks. So what this is, is this is basically the Ned Rig hook, but what they did is they beefed up the wire of it, and they also added a little lead keeper in the middle of it. So why I like this hook is because it's a little bit beefier, so it doesn't bend out as easy. And then it also has that little lead keeper, which when you put super glue on it, locks that baby in place so that Ned Rig does not go anywhere. So that's why that's my go-to. I'm going to be throwing a Ned Rig around. The next Ned Rig hook that I really like is going to be that football Ned. This is one I throw if I want to get it a little bit deeper. They make this up to a quarter ounce. So it allows me to get that Ned Rig down deeper and fished in a lot of different situations. And it just helps crawl over top of that rock with that football head being on there. And it's a little bit stiffer hook. It's not super, super flimsy like the original Ned Rig. Uh, so this one holds up a little bit better, which is why I like it because a lot of times I'm throwing these for big smallmouth and sometimes you catch big drum and whatnot and you're horsing them up to the boat. So that one does not bend out. Now the last hook that I want to talk about is one that nobody ever seems to throw, but it is one of my absolute favorite Ned Rig hooks ever created because it's going to help you catch more fish, lose less Ned Rigs, and that is the Ned Locks EWG Ned Rig Hook. This is one that nobody throws. And when I tell you I will lose one Ned Rig to your 15, I'm not joking. This is a Ned Rig hook that I love when I'm fishing around current and when I'm fishing around grass or rock that really likes to catch on your Ned Rigs. Because it EWGs it, what it does is it just keeps it perfectly weedless. And so that makes it easy to throw around all different situations, especially you guys fishing in current. If you're a river fisherman, this is the Ned Rig hook you need to be throwing specifically because there's so much brush and all the kind of sticks and whatnot on the bottom and the big boulders that your Ned Rig tends to get hung up on, that won't happen with this hook. I promise you, this one goes so much better through all kinds of cover. So the beautiful thing about a Ned Rig is there's really no wrong way to fish it either. Some of my favorite ways to fish it are I'm gonna show you right now. First, you gotta cast it out. Right here, we have a little shell bar with some grass mixed in. And so we're kind of just fishing for some smallmouth and some largemouth mixed in. I have this on a Z-Man. This is a Ned Locks head. It's a little bit heavier head, so I can get down in that, you know, I'm probably in 10 feet of water right here. But all I'm doing is just nice dragging it and giving it a little hop every time it gets caught in grass. That's probably the best way you can fish a Ned Rig is to just nice, slow drag it. Because with it looking almost like nothing, it looks a little bit like everything. And it just looks like something that a fish would eat. 
because it has that lack of action, it just stands out to those fish as something that's not in their face, and that's why they eat it. So that slow drag really does a great job at replicating a lot of what lives on the bottom of pretty much every lake in the world because it looks like something small and something that a fish would want to eat. Another way you can fish it is to do a lot of vicious hops with it to get those fish's attention. But what I like to do after those vicious hops is I will sit there and I will just really shake it on the spot. So I'll hop it and then let it fall back down and just kind of shake it right there. Because what it does, it catches those fish's attention as you hop it up and then when you let it fall back down, they kind of come right back down. And so I picture those fish just sitting there staring at it and that's when I do that nice a little shake where I'm just sitting there shaking that rod tip having that Ned rig just down there quivering that's one of my absolute favorite ways to fish it another great way to fish a Ned rig that nobody does except for my one buddy is he actually swims a Ned rig because he likes to use it for both fishing it for suspended fish and for fishing for fish on the bottom he will cast it out using his forward facing sonar but you don't have to let it get to the bottom and then he will just slow reel it over the bottom because again it does the same thing a swim bait does but without the tail right it looks like absolutely nothing but it looks like something small and defenseless swimming through the water and so those fish really feel the need to eat it it's a great way to cover water in the fall and in the spring like we have here to really see where those fish are at because a lot of times you'll get those active fish to come up and eat it or at least bump it and then you know that those fish are there and those fish can be caught right there in that spot so then you can mark a waypoint drop your anchor whatever you're doing and really try to catch those fish after you figure out where they're at so after Z-Man came out with the original Ned Rig or the TRD, every other company across the market, across the industry wanted to come out with their own. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I want to talk about now is my three favorite Ned Rigs that are actually out there. And what they are is they're not just Ned Rigs, they're Ned Rig style baits. Because every company's Ned Rigs pretty much work the same. You know, other than the fact that Z-Man holds up infinitely better than every other company's, they all do the same thing. They have the same action for the most part. The only difference is the Z-Man Ned Rig tends to stand up a little bit better and not fall over as easily. And so what I'm gonna show you is my three favorite Ned Rig style baits that kind of encompass all about a Ned Rig. And the first is obviously the original TRD by Z-Man. I've talked about that one enough throughout this video. The Elaztec on it is phenomenal. But what I will do for you is I'll break down my three favorite colors of it. The first of which is going to be that original green pumpkin, right? It's hard to beat a green pumpkin TRD. But a close second that I throw almost as much as a green pumpkin is Gobi Bryant. And what this is, is this is basically the deal. My favorite color used to be the deal, but I found that the factory laminate comes better on Gobi Bryant. It comes better with that dark top and light bottom, and it looks very similar to the deal, but what it does is it replicates every bait fish or everything that lives on the bottom. Everything has a dark back and a light belly, and so that is my clear water go-to. Now, if you are living in smallmouth country or you're living in dingier water, a very overlooked Ned Rig color is one you saw in the thumbnail of this video. That is going to be Copper Truce. It has that chartreuse on the bottom with a green pumpkin copper flake on it. And that baby, when I tell you gets bit by smallmouth from everywhere in the world, I am not kidding you. That sucker catches fish. But I love it early in the morning and late in the evening. Or if you have some wind or turbulent water, this puppy stands out and just catches absolute giants. Now I'm going to show you my other two favorite Ned Rig style baits. The bait that I want to talk about in the Ned Rig lineup is going to be that Ned Rig Craw. Now that's another one by Z-Man. And what it is, it basically just has little pinchers on there that float. And so it just looks like a small crawfish. And so I love that for clear water, especially smallmouth. But what I really love it for more than anything else is a jig trailer. This fits great on the back of compact jigs and gives it that lifelike craw style position where it stands up with it and just does a great job at filling out a small compact jig and giving you that profile that fits with those smaller jigs to give you that natural crawfish presentation. Now the third bait that I want to talk about is one that is actually a saltwater bait but it's a phenomenal little Ned Rig bait. And what it is, it's actually the Crusties. It's meant to be like a little sand flea or a little crab, but it has two small pinchers on there that almost are like double tail grubs. 
and it's just a nice flat body that has a great profile in the water. It slides when it falls, and those little claws are back there just kind of really being finessy. And the reason that I like it is because it's so small and so compact, but yet it has a little bit of movement from the little buggy legs on there and these little pinchers that just gets bit when those fish are being really, really finicky. So the reason that people loved it and it took the industry by storm was because it caught so many fish in every kind of setting possible. Whether you were in a tournament, whether you were fishing from the bank, whether you were fishing a lake, a river, a pond, it didn't matter. And you caught all sizes of fish. You caught small bass, you caught giant bass, you caught medium sized bass. And it became a bait that was a staple in the industry, especially for clear water situations, and particularly finicky fish, which is why I want to talk about it today. Because as I alluded to in the intro, we can't always catch them on the fun baits that we like to throw so that's when we break down to some of our favorite finesse gear most people throw a drop shot or a shaky head or you know a carolina rig something like that but a large part of the industry myself included when it gets tough when i'm on a cool bite i like to pick up a ned rig because i know i'm gonna catch fish and as a tournament angler there's nothing scarier than not catching a limit that's what people stress about the most and so a ned rig is just a limit getter it's one of those baits that you can break out no matter what time of year it is and catch your five and catch a ton of fish in between to make sure you're gonna have a fun day on the water so the one thing that I see people doing wrong with a Ned Rig, and this is common across all finesse fishing applications, is they try to over muscle it, right? It's a spinning rod application for the most part. Okay, it's basically a light version of a shaky head. It is a small presentation. And what people try to do is they try to use fast action rods with it, and so what ends up happening is you lose or bounce fish, where you hit them on the hook set and they come off like the first jump, or, or mid fight, they just pull off. And that's because people try to overwork the bait with rods that are too stiff, you know? And so what you need to do is you need to get a nice medium light or medium action spinning rod. And I will have my combination linked down below. My combination is a 7-1 medium fast action spinning rod. And I know you say, well, you just said don't use the fast action. Well, this says extra fast, but it's not. It has a very soft tip on it, which is why I like it for this application. The 7-1 allows me to cast it further with it being a lighter bait, but I don't want too much in there because I feel like if I go to too long of a rod, then it makes it too soft. Because if you have too soft of a rod, you'll know you'll lose them on the first jump. Because if you don't get a good hook in, they're gonna jump the first time and throw your bait 99% of the time. And so you need to have the right gear. The next thing I, I recommend is going to braided line, braid to a fluorocarbon leader. And so I have Cortland Master Braid in an eight pound here in that high-vis yellow so I can see it. Because a lot of the bites that you get on this, you will watch your line just ease off. You won't even feel it like dunk. You'll just pick up and there'll be something there. And so that braid makes me a lot more sensitive and allows me to feel a lot more of that. So that way I can catch more of those fish on a finesse application like this. So as always, guys, we're going to end with a Bible verse. But today's Bible verse is actually something that I heard my pastor talk about this past Sunday. And it's not a Bible verse. Uh, everybody has heard the famous line, you never see a U-Haul behind a hearst. You know, you can't take everything with you when you go. So building up possessions is, is moot, right? You're supposed to help others and whatnot. But that's not entirely true. And one thing that my pastor pointed out was there is one thing you can take with you when you go to heaven, and that's your family. You know, if you're a man or a woman of faith and you want to take something with you, if you want to take your loved ones, you have to spread the word to them and help get them to heaven because that is one thing you can absolutely take with you. If you share the gospel with them, and I know, trust me, my family's not all about it either. It is a struggle to share the gospel and to get people to go to church and to just get them to open their hearts to the Lord. But if you never stop trying, then there's always that chance you can take all of your loved ones with you when you go. So that's something that I want each of you guys to dwell on when you're sitting at home around your family members or you're texting your friends or your family. I want, ask yourself, when's the last time you invited them to church? When's the last time you guys talked about the Bible? When's the last time you talked about your faith at all? Um, and so I want you to I want you to dwell on that a little bit. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along with my content. And uh, God bless every single one of you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.